Hello colleagues, it's Barry Johnson again from Solar Twin. This short talk is about EN12975 and Solar Twin and how Solar Twin is affected by the assumptions about stagnation. I hope it will give some insight into uh, polymer technology, but also into the standard EN12975, which several of the manufacturers have found to be market limiting. Presentation will take this structure. We will look at the technology, then the standard, then look within the standard at five durability tests, and then focus on one test, and then look at the changes that should be done. Looking at the technology first, Solar Twin has got twin technologies because it has a large thermal panel and a small PV panel. From an engineering perspective, Solar Twin has been designed from basics with environmental efficiency as the goal. It's a patented flat panel. It's pumped by photovoltaics. It contains water at low pressure in a system with an open vent, just a hole to the air, and flexible polymer pipes. It's made of metals and polymers. The only glass in the system is the PV panel. It's ultra low flow. It's variable speed and has microbore pipes. The peak flow is 40 litres an hour, but being variable speed, it's nearly always less than that. There's no heat exchanger, it's a direct flow system, so you get high stratification of hot water at the top. Backup heat is applied in the evening. In terms of handling overheating, the pump is always on to give heat export. This is very different from conventional solar where the pump is switched off. The glazing is twin wall polycarbonate and it's non-selective and it's double glazed. Non-selective because we want to be able to dump heat by radiation. It's an integrated design. The panel is designed only to be used with solar twin components and only as a system where the pump is continually run when there are high temperatures. It's not a system that is stagnated in normal use. Here are some of the components. A miniature panel on the left, the PV on the right, some of the pipes on the left and the pump on the right. There are several ways you can plumb Solar Twin. If you want high pressure water, you put a water store in and you run small pipes from that to the panel via the pump. That then puts hot water at the top of the store. And you take the heat out of the store using a large heat exchanger, which takes cold mains water and adds that to the bottom, flows the water through, and then takes the water out from the top via a thermostatic blender valve. It's a low pressure, low voltage, simple system. How does it not boil the water? It doesn't boil the water by making sure that you have the right panel area in relation to the water storage volume, so that you have a thermal buffer. Here's the worst case scenario. We took a panel and we gave it to an independent test house, and they put the panel facing south on an airfield with a very good view of the sky. And they did it during a heat wave, lots of sun, high temperatures, and they didn't take any water off for a long time. What happened? If you look at the red line, that's the sunlight level. If you look at the blue line, that's the panel temperature. And if you look at the yellow line, that is the temperature of the top of the cylinder. You'll see that the panel doesn't reach boiling but it did reach uh, just over 90 degrees Celsius. The water in the top of the cylinder never went more than 90 Celsius. The peak was 18, 87 Celsius. What is very interesting is to look at what happens between the yellow and the blue curve, that's the cylinder and the panel, at about mid-afternoon, because they cross over. That means that the top of the cylinder is being cooled down. And later in the day, the system is actually exporting heat. So if you look at the yellow line, which is the water temperature from left to right, it cools off gradually at night because no insulation is 100% good. It cools off quite a bit early in the morning because cooler water than the top is being added. As you can see, the grey line at the bottom of the cylinder rises up. And then it rises steadily till mid-afternoon. And then it falls at about the same gradient. And you end up in the evening with water at just over 70 Celsius in the cylinder, just as you did at the beginning of the day. 
It's a self-sustaining, self-correcting system. You don't need to switch the pump off to control overheat. Moving on to EN12975, the dinosaur standard that we have had problems with for years. It's one of several European standards, EN series, on solar thermal in Europe. And they're treated as a gold standard to which the industry must conform. As exclusive gateways for solar key mark, national building codes, most national market support programs. Our technology faces market restriction because EN12975 is being misapplied to our panel. Tests that are not appropriate are being treated as appropriate, and that means that our panel could fail them. This is a general issue. It affects innovations in general. Unless EN12975 is removed as a sole gateway, in the sense that other standards can be used, or if it is possibly changed, the rest of the world will overtake Europe as innovators. We have not had a good return on investment, because our market has been severely limited by this standard. What does EN12975 test? Well, it tests solar collectors, certain kinds and certain aspects of them. It does test standalone collectors, not integrated systems. But it doesn't test annual system performance or sustainability or the independence of a consumer to be free from backup heating. But it does test two main things about solar panels alone. Performance, and that gives you a formula, a quadratic equation with three numbers which characterise it. And it also tests durability, whether there are up to eight tests with pass or fail criteria for each. We're going to be looking mainly at one durability test today. But stepping back before we do, the dinosaur assumptions in, in EN12975 are that the quadratic equation will characterise collectors correctly. It won't if there's a thermal step change. A thermal step change is something like the use of thermochromics to control temperatures or, for example, a thermostat which opens at a certain temperature which will maybe allow air to vent through a panel and cool it. That is not a constraint for our technology but it is for other technologies which use solar thermal and polymers. The next four do constrain us 